Hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode of the Get Rich or Get Drunk Trying podcast. It's your girl, Asia Abstin. We are on episode 34. I have a dope interview for you guys today. My boy, Vince Valhalla is with me today. I mean, obviously coming from LA because we are continuing to social distance. I hope you guys are doing the same. I don't want to see any more Instagram videos of like underground parties and beach parties. Y'all are tripping people get it together. Stay your ass in the house so I can get on a flight somewhere sexy real soon and be safe. Um, we're going to jump directly into the interview. I just want to remind you guys to like and subscribe to the show, leave a rating, Follow me on Instagram at Get Rich or Get Drunk Trying. And um, I love you. Let's hop right into it. All right, guys, welcome back to episode 34. I have a special interview for you today. Um, I have known this young man for, I don't even know how long. How long have we known each other? What year did we meet? I think it was 2004 or five. I'm going to say six. I'm going to say six. I have known this man for, we're going to say 14 years. This is none other than CEO, rock star, musical genius. Vince Valhalla is with us today. Um, You know, get fucking excited. Like we're drinking. It's a Jack and Ginger on my side of town. It's a Jack and Ginger on his side of town, shockingly, we wound up with the same beverage because that's because that because we yeah, know me. That, you know what? And, In and real that was life. not planned. That was not planned. <laughs> thank, thank you so much for having me on the show. Uh, I've been supporting the show since the beginning, so it's dope to see how far you've come oh, and dope to see uh, you continuing to uh, turn out these episodes. And uh, I'm trying, <laughs> even with social distancing. Yes, 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 yes. So I appreciate uh, you having me on for sure. It's my pleasure. Uh, Vince is coming to us way from L.A., the land of uh, traffic and earthquakes. So, you know, why you would ever leave beautiful Miami for L.A. is beyond me. But that's a whole nother episode. <laughs> for sure. And I, I want to make sure everybody that's listening that I want them to know that I am still a Miami resident. But <laughs> that's because rich people keep because, two houses. <laughs> yes, because I well, not, let me back that up. I'm not rich, but. Uh, I am blessed enough to uh, live in two different places. So I'm oh, excuse a- me, bi coastal vibes. So, uh, but with that being said, I- I'm here because uh, you know, I when I was expanding uh, my company, I pretty much needed to actually be in LA. So, uh, but I love LA. I love Miami. Obviously, Miami is my home, so I'm right, never right. gonna leave there. But uh, I forgive yeah. you. The people forgive you. For sure, definitely. You had to go for work to build the empire. I mean, okay, we get it. We're going to let you slide on that. So why I wanted Vince on the show is because I was thinking about the subject of perseverance Mm -hmm. and how in these types of times, you have to have grit. You have to have a mental sharpness. You have to have commitment. To whatever your thing was pre-coronavirus, pre-apocalypse, you have to have a tenacity to maintain that shit right now that is unmatched. Um, The world is falling apart. At this point, we're at 50,000 American lives have been lost on top of the hundreds of thousands of lives that have been lost around the world. Like, Mm -hmm. this would be the time to fall apart. And no one would blame you. But for those of us that have a vision and can see the future and see beyond and see the big picture once this is over with, time waits for nobody. Uh, And it's not going to wait for you to fall apart and get your shit back together. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying that to the listeners as well as saying it to myself, giving myself the pep talk to keep going when shit is falling apart. So that just took me to the concept of perseverance. And I swear to God, the, the face that popped in my head was yours. I appreciate that. I mean, you know, when I think about anything that um, anything that I've done and I've set out to do, like literally every goal I set out for, like in the beginning, like I've gotten in 
in a different form. And then it helped me kind of really see, okay, well now I got to, you know, when you actually get a goal done, you got to actually continue to do goals. So, so basically setting goals is just like, I realized like it's going to be all of my life type of thing. So as far as on uh, the perseverance side, I want you to tell me, like, I know you mentioned it, you know, but what would be one of the reasons why you kind of thought of me when you thought, when you think about the perseverance? Well, okay. So Vince is in music, right? So as a producer, as a person that runs a label, especially an independent label, music might be one of the most uphill battles of all genres. I, I agree. I agree. 100%. When you don't come from money, when you don't come from celebrity connections, when you come from a city outside of LA or New York, mm -hmm. especially coming from the South, especially coming from Miami, mm -hmm. that is um, bringing a, you know, knife to a gunfight for real. It is. It so is. for you <laughs> to have, made that journey and made so many decisions over a span of 15 years that you've been doing this. Yeah. Is it's mind boggling that you can keep at something so hard that so yeah. many people get into because it's cool, realize how hard it is and get out of it. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's How could I not think of you? I appreciate that. I appreciate that. So just when you when I think about it and when I think about the time frame being 15 years from when I started Valhalla, like it's really and you really saw it from the beginning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You literally saw it from the beginning. So, uh, you know, we've we've grown, we've done so many things. And that's kind of why I had to leave Miami, because you had outgrown it. I, I, I think I outgrown it because what happened was we. So just to kind of give everybody uh, yes, give the people like a, a little timeline, background. just a really quick timeline of my career. Like I started uh, in high school, uh, you know, connecting artists with producers and stuff like that. I always had like I felt like I had a um, a knack for, you know, picking records, picking producers and putting them with artists and stuff like that. So I was doing that since high school. And then when I got out of high school, uh, I was going to do an internship at a label in New York. It was Bad Boy at the time. Uh, but I ended up Crazy. not, yeah, I ended up not doing it. They, they, they told me to come through, uh, but I didn't want to move to, to New York. I was like, I want to be able to make my, make a name for myself in my in city. Miami. Yeah. So what I did was I said, okay, you know what? I'm going to build it from the ground up here. So, uh, in 2000, uh, so out of high school, I, I pretty much was started. I started to learn about the industry. I started to learn about Motown and I started studying. And then mm -hmm. I started I started the company in 2005. I was super, I was super young. I was like, I was thinking to myself, like, man, like, how hard can it be? How, <laughs> but, I, but I told myself, I said, if I give myself at least 10 years mm -hmm. before I see any progress, I'm not going to be disappointed. So mm -hmm. I'm glad I actually told my gave myself that pep talk because and I feel but like how does a how old were you at the time? 19 ish. I was 19. Yeah. When I when I knew I was going to. How does a 19 year old have the mentality? Uh, I mean, we live in a microwave generation. We live in an ADHD. If it didn't happen in 30 seconds, it was trash. We live in the world of fucking TikTok. Yeah. Where people don't watch TikToks because they're too yeah, long. Exactly. How does a 19 year old have the forethought to say I'm gonna put in 10 years and even if I see no progress I'm still okay with that how did you how Sway I think you know what and I hate to like you know and, and I say that when I say I hate it's it's not a hate but it's it's I don't want to sound preachy but it was it's really like I had I've always had a relationship with God so it's like it's one of those things where I feel like he spoke to me and said, like, look, if this you, is just what it is. You're cool with not having any results in 10 years and still working with you being, um, you know, where you at, then you should do this and you have to do it because this is your calling. Because when I was in high school, it was a like I felt like I had a calling and I said I, I was told that you have to be 
a part of entertaining people. That's mm-hmm. what you're calling. That's why you're here. Like, you know what I'm saying? You're going to change things with the connection of that. So I've always had that. I've always had the purpose of knowing like, okay, what's my purpose? I knew right. it and I, I basically stuck with it. So when I started uh, Valhalla, it was a situation of me. Like I knew that if I knew more than what my peers knew and I worked hard, I would be able to actually, you know, at least outshine that had more money than me because mm-hmm. I didn't have a huge budget. Luckily, I had, you know, partners that helped. But at the same time, we've never like even up until this day, I've never gotten an investment or major investment. Nothing. It's all been blood, from- sweat, tears and outworking everybody the fuck else. <laughs> exactly. Now, the. I'll, and I'll get to how the industry's changed later. But basically, you know, just to give everybody a, a, a quick run through of my career. So 2005, I start, I start the label. I add artists like around 2006. Uh, that's when you were around. And uh, then around 2008, we started getting press. We started getting radio uh, spins. Mm-hmm. 2009, uh, you know, I start. I, w- I was developing Kirby at the time, um, and then she released a single in 2010. That's when things kind of changed because then, because then we were getting more radio spins across the world, and then uh, she started getting press, uh, and then she did World Star. Uh, w- she got on World Star like three times, and we didn't. It was one, she went viral like three times. Had labels interested. We net. We have a, We didn't end up taking the deal because of certain things. It just things. didn't work out. Didn't mm-hmm. work out. And then 2012, more press. She kept working until 2015. We released uh, an album called Doing the Most. It was one of the highest selling independent R&B albums in the South Atlantic region uh, for for us. So that was one of our like sales milestones at the time. So. Mm-hmm. When, when, remember when I told you 10 years, right. like, remember when I said, like, you got to be okay with the 10 years, 2005, I started in 2015, we have like our, like our time yeah. moment, like you can't make this stuff up. So anyway, then, uh, 2007, 2016, Kirby went on tour. Uh, and then 2017, we got named, uh, in, uh, label of the year from, uh, Miami New Times. So at that point, I knew that we already did everything we had to do in Miami. We, mm-hmm. we in Florida, actually. So Florida, I knew Florida was like, it, it's nothing more for us to do. So then I said, I have to go to L.A. I have to change from the independent mindset to a major mindset. So right. got to L.A. Uh, we ended up doing a distribution deal with a company called AWOL. It's one of like the, the top independent distributors uh, for um, for artists. So now I'm in L.A. and uh, I'm doing other stuff, obviously, business wise. But right. I'm sure you'll probably end up getting to that. But but, but that, that's really my career in a nutshell. Oh, and before that, before I, I, I kind of left this out, but uh, we started managing a production team by the name of Track Burners, the Track Burners. And they uh, we started managing them in 2017, 2018. They landed on Future's um, Use Me Out. No, use, uh, what's the name of the album? Uh, Future... Hendrix, the Hendrix yeah. album. Okay. It was a song called "Use Me." They produced. Uh, it that is went, in oh, my Apple Music, so I'm familiar. Yes. <laughs> and then um, they were on a Big Sean album that went platinum. So actually, all of it, like I ended up, I never really wanted to be a manager, but what's crazy is that I ended up managing a platinum production team. So it was just, it's just one of those things where it's just like the, the success you're looking for might not have the outcome that you exactly see because it was a lot of things that I wished for and then I sat back and realized I got it but it wasn't just in the form that I that I wanted didn't expect it to be in you know what I'm saying so I think if people keep that mindset in mind I think they'll be able to kind of persevere and kind of continue to keep it keep the actual um dream alive dream alive exactly exactly it's just shocking to me that someone can put 15 years into something it's just it's beyond passion like you said it's it was God telling you something it was your spirit telling you something because so many of us give something shit 15 weeks and we're Mm -hmm. like well (laughs) that didn't work and for you to stick to artistry and music and production and 
owning a label and entertainment for that long is is beyond. And what's crazy is that you'll hear somebody like a like a Puff say or Quincy Jones. Perfect example. Quincy Jones said, "I feel like I'm just getting started." I was just about to say that. <laughs> so that's exactly like how I feel because the music business today is a is a marketplace that you need capital. You need like more because we're in an economy where it's not about how many sales you can actually sell. It's about the attention because it's streaming. So that means that if I need to have more attention than whoever I'm competing against, you have to buy those eyeballs. Exactly. So yeah. that's that's why I'm in a whole different ball game. But just like how I thrived in those other eras and I was able to survive off of when, because remember 2005, that was there wasn't iTunes in 2005. Right. We were, and you you remember we was we made our own CDs. We gave them out. We sold them. Physically. Not physically. physically giving niggas CDs. And then iTunes. Wait, came out. What a time to be alive. Right. So and then iTunes comes out. We we thrive there. And then streaming comes out. We're just thriving there in that in that space there. So it's just like it's one of those things where like. I literally have to, it's, it's really good for me because I really get to understand the business side of things. And then I also get to understand um, how streaming works and stuff like that. I love technology. So it's one of those things where um, it's so, it's super fun. Like, I, I think anybody that's listening to this podcast, that's wondering, like, what's their calling? Like, the calling's going to come, but I think it starts from what they love to do and- mm-hmm something that they would do even if they weren't making money if at money wasn't involved like that's exactly. an organic way to figure out what would you do like ask yourself that in the quietness of your mind while you have this time to reflect during quarantine that's a fantastic thing to think about like if money wasn't involved if i was already jeff bezos rich what would i do with my life every day and then work backwards from that and figure out how you can actually implement that because exactly. coronavirus is teaching us I mean, life is short. Life is a yeah. lot shorter than we thought it was originally. Mm-hmm. You might not have all the time you think you're going to have, so why not do it now? I fully agree. Um, and actually, that was a perfect segue to my next question for you. What do you think uh, or what do you wish you would have known about the music industry at 19 before you decided, I'm going to start my own label, shit's going to be cool, I'm going to have all the video vixens, I'm going to get all the money. <laughs> what did you wish that you would have known then about the music industry before you got involved because so many people think it's shooting videos and private planes and going on tour what do you wish somebody would have told you hmm that's a very good question because i know honey i got interview skills I yeah that is, <laughs> yeah that's a really <laughs> say my first rodeo for sure um you know what i would say that one of the things i think I wish I knew now. Mm-hmm. I think I would have. Or even advice you would have given yourself, like if you had a time machine and could I, hop back and tell yourself something, when I, you filed that Valhalla trademark, what would you if, have told yourself? If I if I w- would give myself advice, I would have I would have wished I knew what I knew financially now, what I knew then, not mm-hmm. really more so of the business because I study the music business continuously. So it's like, there isn't something that I studied the past. I studied the now and then every, every step you stay up on what's coming I it up. So it's like, there wasn't anything that I wish I knew it was financially. Oh man. Like the past, I think I've had a financial, um, literacy awakening. Mm-hmm. Um, now you know that's what I want to hear about. This is yeah. the rich get drunk trying. We want to yeah. talk about the money. So I had a financial um, uh, awakening in the past year. Like, what's crazy is I thought I knew about money, mm-hmm. but it's been a financial, I would say, financial revelation. Because what's crazy is is that like I've been used to doing my own books and stuff like that. Uh, but what's crazy is is that. I started reading books. I started reading like, obviously, Think and Grow Rich. It was 
uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad. Mm-hmm. I know that's obvious. I know people always yeah. just say that. Classics, but like, yeah. classic stuff. It's a it's classic a cl- for a reason. It's one of the most exactly books on the planet for a reason. It's cool. All of these books kind of made me start to think about things in a different way because. Okay. Now, do you mean in regard to your personal finance or business finance or both? I would say both because okay. with music. Like when I in in 2008, I started a company called Blue Odin, right? Mm -hmm. So it was a subsidiary of Valhalla, which basically because I started getting companies like that would hit me up and be like, hey, I love how you're doing the marketing for this. I would love if you could actually do this for my company. For us, right. So I started doing consulting for other companies. So I started another company and uh, literally if I did not do that, I would not be in a position to, you know, we make money in music, but like it's so many other ways that, you know, that I actually get an income. So it's like, Mm -hmm. you know, the marketing has, I would say marketing has, I've pretty much made more money in marketing than than music. music. Oh, I believe that a hundred percent. So as far as on that end, that's, that's the reason why I'm able to kind of continue the company and continue doing what I'm doing. But I would say that the business knowledge that I've, I won't say the business, but the just the financial literacy knowledge, like I thought I knew how money worked, work, but work, like right. <laughs> after, after reading and, you know, doing more research, find was, out how little, you know, I really was like, yo, like I thought I knew what I knew, but one of the things I was, I was remembering, I was remembering it was a time I was living, uh, I don't know if you remember when I was living in a, in a loft downtown. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So that was like during the financial shutdown. Mm-hmm. Right. So that was like when people was getting foreclosed on and stuff like that. So I was actually living really good during that time. Like mm-hmm. I, I remember it like it was yesterday. It made me like just just thinking about like how I dealt with money then. Like mm-hmm. there was I remember having years where I would be doing my taxes and I say like, damn, like. I spent all this money? Oh, what? What? <laughs> where, where? Like, what? Because there's no accountability for it, especially when you're an entrepreneur, you're yeah. self-employed, you make your own mon- money, you make your own hours. Mm-hmm. It just, it comes in so quickly that you don't, you can't keep track and keep pace with how quickly it goes out. Like, you know me, mm-hmm. I worked in strip clubs forever uh-huh. as a bartender. I made a thousand dollars tonight. Well, I'm gonna go spend a thousand tomorrow uh-huh. because I know I'm gonna make that thousand right back. Exactly. And then at the end of the year, you made two hundred grand, but you only got six or seven of it left. Yeah. Where the hell is this money at? Where yeah. You, exactly. Did I really buy all these clothes and these shoes and have nothing saved and nothing invested? That's what been I'm there. Been there. Hundred percent been there. I did not have like I didn't have a parent to tell me. No. Okay. This is how because now I'm 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 involved in real estate and I'm seeing all of these guys that were 23 and their their dad told them how to actually invest and stuff like that and how you know these people that are in like their early 20s like buying properties and stuff like that if I would have known what I knew then a hundred percent one million percent but you know what it is like it's a twofold it's a two prong issue mm-hmm. on the left. You didn't have the the foresight to look into it on your own. You mm-hmm. a grown ass man. This money's mm-hmm. coming in your pocket. Maybe you should take mm-hmm. a minute and think about what to do with it. Exactly. The other side of it is mm-hmm. you can't research and inquire about things you've never been exposed to. If exactly. your parents work blue collar jobs and live paycheck to paycheck, and so do your aunts and uncles and your homeboys and your girlfriend and your grandparents and everyone you've ever known works that way. You have no experience. You, your eyeballs are not open to it. Yeah, so it's a two piece problem, which is why I preach generational wealth and financial literacy so much because my parents didn't put me on the shit as far as how to build an empire. Mm-hmm. I knew how to go to work and how to save 10% of my salary. That's it. You mm-hmm. don't realize until you grow up that nobody on this planet got rich by saving money. It doesn't work. It, it, Exactly. It don't work like that. It doesn't work like that. That's what poor people do. Rich people do not get rich by saving money. They figure out how to make their money a vehicle to make them more money. They buy liabilities with their assets. 
but nobody told us that. And yeah, that comes right. from 400 years of slavery. That's a whole nother show. That's a whole nother show. That's, That's a, a whole nother episode. But if imagine <laughs> if we would have knew what we knew then. Oh, please. Then we do what we knew, what we know now then. You can forget oh, it. Man. You can forget it. It'll be over. Like, I literally, I promise you, I would be a billionaire right now. 100%. Like, easy. I would easily be a easy. billionaire right now. But it's all good. It's all yeah. good. We're working with what we got now. (laughs) I'm just happy that I was able to, uh, I'm able to do it now because especially with this new, with with COVID-19 and and coronavirus going around, like we are in a position where we don't even know where it's going to end. We don't know when things are going to be back to normal. I almost even say it's not going to be back to normal. It's not going to be back to normal. Right. We don't even know when it's going to be back to a, uh, symbolizes uh, some sort of more normalcy. So, right. I'm just happy that I know it now because if I didn't, I be would bad be, I'd be, I'd be like in a bad spot. Millions of Americans are because people are just they're they're ignorant on their own. Yep. They haven't been exposed to these things, especially mm-hmm. minorities, especially women. It's a, it's it is starting behind the eight ball. Period. Yep. Like I was taught to save ten percent of my paycheck. I remember my mother telling me that when I was ten. What was never told to me was about investment, was about commercial real estate, was about tax law, was about I I didn't get any of that until I hit 30. And those were things that I found out on my own. Mm -hmm. So it is our job and our responsibility to educate the people around us, our friends, our family, and then leave things for our kids and their kids like uh, our Anglo-Saxon counterparts. Because that's exactly. what they've been doing since the beginning of time. And they're looking at us like, y'all niggas ain't never heard of that? Uh, No, we actually have not heard of that before. Yeah. You know, one thing I realized, like, I started I started getting this information. I started wanting to share it with everybody. And what I got was a bunch of people that wasn't, that didn't embrace that mindset. Because they were on, they were talking about, hey, like, I want it to be like social. I want this country to be a socialist country. Like mm-hmm. I want it to be. And that's a whole nother. I'm sure that's a whole nother, a whole nother show. show. But, you know, there's a lot of people that like and unfortunately, there's a lot of our people that don't want to hear anything. Right. They believe what they believe and they don't want to hear. Ignorance is bliss. Anything. Exactly. So it's like at this point, like I'm going to give I'm going to share the information with my family. I'm gonna share the information with my friends and the people that want to hear it. But if I want to hear what, hey, look, more power to you. I'm, I'm going. That's be good. it's really like, all you can do. You can't drive yourself crazy. You can bring the horse to water, but you cannot make him drink. Exactly. But I 100% feel you. That's part of the reason I started the show. Was okay. I'm learning these things, and I have a voice, and I would like to share them. Period. That's it. Yeah. I'm already black and female. Like, who else is gonna tell us if not me and women that look like me? So, mm-hmm. whew, you know, I know that. You know yeah. what, Vince? You're trying to get back on my show. That's what this is. You're trying to have a two part episode because you know we could get all with the money. We could definitely, we could definitely do it for sure. But it's, you know, if. I would, if I would go back, like I said, financial literacy would be one of the things. And that's why when I eventually have kids and stuff like that, like they're going to be good. They're like, they won't have to, if they, they'll know that you got to work, you got to do your thing. But just because mom and dad are rich, don't mean you rich. Exactly. But, you know, I want them to know that, you know, they have a plan. They're like they're, they're going to have everything set in front of them so they can Amen. really. That's you know? really all it's about. That's all you can can strive for is to have your kids be in a better set up than we were. Is yep. there one if you could drop one gem on the people that you learned about financial literacy? What is a one simple takeaway that you can drop on the people from your awakening, whether it be a business financial tip or a personal finance tip? I would say that one of the big things is mentors. Find whatever, like, let's just say if you want to get into real estate, find somebody that is doing it. Find somebody that has actually been doing it. When uh, So I, I started getting into um, real estate investing last year. And um, I remember I was, I was driving around and I, I, I saw a sign of somebody that was saying, you know, we buy houses. So... Mm-hmm. I actually called the number 
and I randomly ended up finding a guy that was basically involved with uh, real estate for over 15 years. Perfect. So I now I have somebody that I can call if I need, you know, some assistance. And then and just like that, you built a relationship off uh, seeing his sign. The, exactly. That That's it. So finding a mentor. That's perfect. Is, that's meant you know, to be. Yeah. <laughs> do the research. A literal sign. Correct. So if, I, if I could give any advice to anybody, I would say. Because I like me personally, I'm always gonna be focused on music, mm-hmm. but I'm never one to You can multitask. You can I learn can more things yeah. about more issues exactly. in life exactly. than music. I'm, gonna, yeah. I'm going to be the best. I've already I've already studied music for long enough, right? Right. Now I'm studying other the, things, other passions. Or whatever the case may be. So if somebody's listening to this and they already have one thing, but they wanna be able to make you know, money on the side or do whatever the case may be, study it and find somebody that's doing it and build a relationship. Right. Mentorship is like super important because it's like, and that's kind of what I've become like in the music industry. Like there's a, like a lot of independent artists that, you know, they hit me up and they'll say, you know, I'm looking for advice or whatever the case may be. I'm My goal now is to, um, give people information like now because even though you're so young you're an og in the game because you've been doing it consistently day after day for over a decade so i see that and you know what i agree with you 100 percent with mentorship right mentorship is a cheat code that's what it is why would you spend your own money your own time failing over and over again at something when you could bypass that and cheat code your way to someone who has done it for 15, 20 years. Like, why not? If somebody's ready, willing, and able to give you a leg up in anything, especially as a minority, yep. take it. Yep. And yep. all a person could do, the worst thing they could do is say no. That's it. Yep. And yep. then you move on and you find someone else who is willing to mentor you. I agree with that a million percent. If more yeah. of us would do that, we would all get a lot of places a lot faster. Exactly. And I have done uh, I've made a lot of mistakes period but I could tell you that totally game with sending uh, someone information that's going to avoid one of my mistakes yes that's so that's 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 really like my my thing is is that like you know there's people and what's crazy is I got I got a girl that works with me now she's one of our like one of our A&R's she I randomly just said if anybody wants to get in if if a female wants to get involved in the music business let me know I want to help one person or as mm-hmm. many as I can so she hit me up and um she was real eager she was real hungry and I you know I'm now I'm showing her so hopefully eventually she can get reach back and show the next person exactly so if she knows everything I know then what's going to happen is is that she can Trickle that information down to the next person. That's, and that's, about the next person. Trying, that's what I'm trying to do right now is I'm trying to just mentor as many people as possible and give people information. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's what I'm trying to do. So mentorship. So to answer your question, mentorship, study, study, study a business, study whatever business, because I literally before I started Valhalla, I took like music business and a bunch of stuff like for about a year before Mm -hmm. I even thought about starting it. So study the business. Yeah. So, yeah. And I'm still studying Still learning as we speak. Anybody that's listening to this, I want them to follow what I'm doing in the next, um, I would say the next year, because like I'm doing, I'm doing market research right now for like a new. Give us the sneak Uh, peek to the new project. Give me just give me a little hint. Okay. So our company is a, is a management and a record label. We also have a, a marketing division as well, like I mentioned to you. But what I actually did was I started, like maybe five years ago, I started a, um, a think tank where I wanted to start doing, uh, and I think I showed you the app that I was working on, right? I believe so. So basically, I developed an app. What's crazy was is that I worked on the app for about four years, and I I'm still working on that, but what's what's crazy is, is that I'm actually about to merge music with tech. So the next step of my journey is kind of in, in like is more focused on innovation because okay. music I could do that in my sleep. 
Right. So I could put together a project and I could do that in my sleep. But right. on the tech side, I think tech this has is the never next been, frontier. Tech has never been married to music as well as it should be. So okay. that's kind of my next step. My next step is to to marry the two in a place where that sounds like a lot of money, young man. Yes. That sounds like a big yeah. check. I might need so, to get involved. <laughs> so basically the goal is to is to because if you if you think about it, you listen to music, but it's a good chance you listen to music on a device or a, I almost say a device, but uh platform. But, but a platform that was developed by a company that wasn't a, a label or a music company. Correct. So that's obviously it's the, not intuitive. It's something that it's a disconnect there. So basically yeah, what I'm yeah. saying is, is that Napster came out and the labels wanted to shut it down. They didn't want to have any kind of um, they, they didn't, didn't want to be cut they out. Didn't, they didn't embrace the, the, the actual technology when right. they should have. And they lost a lot of time. 100 percent. So that's a problem. So basically my next goal is to married it to and that's what i'm working on now so uh exactly. if anybody if anybody's following me then i want to make sure that they uh they they see what we do next and but, i will link all of vince's information in the show notes you'll have his website all his all his info will be there i promise i'm not going to give you you know this genius of a man and not give you access people i got y'all i got y'all back so definitely. what do you think of the current state of music where are you at with it? How do you feel about the new female rappers? What is your stance on? And this is this is rapid fire, so just give me keep it short okay. and simple. Sure. The new so-called stripper rap. Where are you with Lil Baby and the Baby? Give me give me a couple I, thoughts on 2020 I love, music. I love what music is. Um, it's more opportunity. Um, I love the women in rap. Women in rap are like killing it right now. Killing it. Um, so I'm a I'm a huge fan of of I'm a huge fan of uh, Megan. I'm a huge fan of uh, Doja. She's she's a mix between singer rapper. Doja's wild. That's yeah. a wild girl. Doja yeah. might take over the world. <laughs> like because she got very, it. She's very dope. So uh, I'm feeling her. I really think we're in a place where. It's really it's a really exciting time. I love what music is. The only issue now, I think, is with this new uh, with with all of the stuff with COVID. Like it's crazy yeah. because now with the live, money is doesn't exist. How are artists? That's a great question for you. I'm glad I, I'm brilliant. So artists, if the listeners don't know, mm-hmm. do not make money from selling records. Right. They don't make money from selling records as compared to making money from live shows. So taking live shows out of the equation, because you can't pack 30,000 people into an arena anymore. And you know what makes me think of this? Because I know you weren't here for Super Bowl. Were you? You weren't here, right? No, I wasn't. I wasn't. Okay. Uh So the baby did Uh eight performances in three days. Wow. For Super Bowl. That's crazy. At 50K a show. It might have been more than that. It might have been 70k Uh or so. A show. In three days. Yeah. How possible is that? Or not how possible, but how long would it have taken to make that same amount of money in streams? Okay. It's just just, Uh, it's crazy. So how are artists going to make money if you can't pack concerts? Good. That's a great question. So I want to say this first. That is um, the, the fact that Uh, artists aren't making money with streams is actually a misconception okay are making more artists are making more now than they have before i want and when i say that i'm referring to there's a small percentage that are but artists like the baby drake they're making hand over fist in streaming so okay so streaming so so let me put it to you this way the major labels are making millions daily on streams and it's it is trickling down to artists so artists are making the money so there is a lot more money in music as far as music wise as far as the actual streaming than it was before for some weird reason i think consumption since how many years would you say that that's been accurate like the past two or three that has to be relatively recent right okay in the past three years it has changed okay streaming came 
uh, when streaming started uh, surpassing album sales or digital sales, uh, what happened was the labels, like streaming actually increased the number of music like, listened to. Re the revenue that labels were making doubled. Every year it doubled. So basically for the past like four years actually. So four years for the past four years, streaming revenues has increased by double. So so just to give some people some insight, the labels, the way that deals worked before like some in some so every artist is different, but right. for the most part, uh like if a label is making let's just say out of a dollar, an artist is probably making eleven cents from from a dollar that is made from streaming mm -hmm. so um 11 cents 17 cents 20 cents whatever depending case depending on your contract still a lot like i'm talking about like streaming has really nba young boy i'm not sure if you listen to him i don't you okay. I, I don't <laughs> listen to him but he's a case study because he's like the number one artist on youtube right Where's that's wild else? And I think the reason why is because his listeners listen, his most of that's his their platform. They, that's their platform. They don't have streaming. They don't subscribe. And to YouTube streaming. is where all the bag is. Ooh. Exactly. So with that is that NBA young boy is making money regardless right, right. of whatever. So, so so how do they replace the revenue stream of live shows? That's a great question. Travis Scott just did. Uh, I saw the Fortnite yeah, thing. Fortnite thing. So yeah. So I think what's happening is, is that Artists are starting to test stuff so they can see how they can monetize. And what did Travis drop on Fortnite? He perf he didn't perform, but he like dropped the music video. Tell what did he do? So, okay, I just so, read the headline. So yeah, long story short, Fortnite is a game that is like, like the biggest free online game. game it's like on yeah, it's like yeah, pretty much. It's one of the top <laughs> games online. So you can actually buy like if you have this game, you could buy a character. So okay, he bought himself like, as a character. You, basically, he started selling himself as a skin, so you could actually buy his his body to be mm -hmm. him. And he was while you're playing actually, the game. While you're playing the game, and while you're playing the game, you could do that. And then, but the the event yesterday was a performance. Basically, it was a digital avatar of him performing. performing. And, and it was like record breaking. I I saw correct. the headline yeah, today. So basically, like it was like millions of people uh, was playing at the same time, and you know he was like so basically it was like people everybody that was on the game was able to interact. They would be they was able to run close to him. It was like a real concert. So the, the matrix is, is here, people. The matrix is here. So what I'm saying is is that now people are trying to figure out. I, they, how they're going to replace how that they're money. replace the the money from because live, live concerts are not coming back anytime soon. It's, it's going to be quite times. a while. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be some time. So, I right now you're going to start to see a lot of artists test stuff like okay you, experimentation. You, correct. Obviously, you saw you saw the I don't know if you saw the baby face. Yeah, you did see the baby of face. Of course, uh, I did. Uh, We're going to get into that as soon as yeah. we wrap up the question. Yeah. So with just that, you could see like there's things that's being tested to see things are cooking yeah so there's a lot of things you're gonna see so anybody but it's that's good to know that's an education point for me i didn't know that streaming was making them as much money as it was i was under the impression that until you hit you know mariah carey levels they're not really making crazy money off streaming but that you know that's an education point for me yes edu like right now streaming people labels artists are making hand over fists with, with streams now obviously it depends on their deal because you might be in a deal where you know you might have to recoup before you actually get some kind of right. but, but if you have a properly structured deal that's in your favor you are making them right. coins off of okay well that's where my 9.99 a month is going then i yeah. see that exactly well yeah. i'm impressed well then i have to ask you about the versus battle of course it was legendary it was legendary yes um i'm actually i'm gonna pull up the receipt so I can remind myself because I was on Jack that night too. <laughs> so it was a little foggy. I'm going to ask you who you thought the winner of each battle was. Okay. And I want a hard answer. No, maybe, maybe not. Nah, I got okay. you. I already, trust me. I already, already know who won. I already okay. know who I can tell you. Go ahead. 
the original battle, Swiss Beats mm-hmm. versus Timbaland. Who won and why? Timbaland won. Timbaland was a lot more uh, versatile within the battle. I respect, I got a lot of respect for Swiss. Swiss is a legend. Uh, but Tim just Tim he, killed it. The thing is, you got to understand, uh, Swiss has, he's rarely worked with other, collaborated with other Correct. producers. So Tim has. So Tim won. Definitely. Did you expect Tim to win before they even went in? Yes. Okay. I'm a, I'm a fan of Timbaland. Like, you knew I'm to a play. Big fan. Yeah, I already, yeah. Fun yeah. fact, he lives in my building. Uh, boop. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Bomb drop. Um, <laughs> Second battle, uh-huh. Hit Boy versus Boy Wonder. You know what? I gotta be honest. I haven't. Wa- I didn't watch that. But okay. I, Boy Wonder was who I would think was gonna win that off top because I'm a, I'm a Hit Boy fan. I'm a Hit Boy fan too. I just Boy but Wonder. Boy Wonder had it for you. Yeah, Boy he, Wonder had it for me. You should Boy go back Wonder. and watch it. It was good. I'm gonna check that out. Yeah, for sure. Okay, Sean Garrett versus The Dream. The Dream. The yeah. Dream. Come yeah. on, The yeah. Dream. Yeah. That was an easy one. Just, just anybody could Google his face and they'll see well, who won. Anyway, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> uh, Jonte Austin versus Neo. Jonte Austin. Yeah, he yeah he killed it. He killed it. See, I wasn't as familiar with his discography as Neo's, obviously, but it's always such a surprise to see who actually makes your favorite records, especially because R&B producers um, are so different. It's not going to open up with Metro booming on the track. Like, you're not yes. going to know Mustard on the beat immediately who exactly. made what. So it, it's real sneaky in r yeah. You know, and just really, uh, just to kind of chime in with that, like with Johnson, I actually knew about him for obvious reasons, but he was an artist for a short period of time. Er, so I was. Y'all from, all go through that phase where so you yeah, want to be, be in the video. I, I was always a fan of him. So, like, it, I already knew he was gonna win. Play. Okay. Yeah. Even though Neo's a monster, no, we can't nah, no, nah. Neo's a beast. But, yeah, but yeah. no. Nah. He, he This is the one battle I didn't watch. Ryan Tedder versus Benny Blanco. Benny Blanco is I'm a huge fan of Benny Blanco. I'm not what sure who won that. Has he done uh, that I would know? I okay. didn't watch that battle. So Benny Blanco did he did a lot of records. I'm gonna have to Google that when we get off the show. Yeah, I did, yeah. But Look he him did up. A, okay. Yeah, we'll he's, do. Dope. he's dope. Mm-hmm. RZA and DJ Premier. DJ Premier. And yeah, the reason why I say that is because RZA really had a focused discography and Premier worked with a lot more artists. Versatile. So, uh, yeah. I agree. Versatile wins every time. This yeah. one was a favorite for me. Uh, I think it's just the Miami and me. Scott Storch versus Manny Fresh. I say Scott Storch. The reason why. Easy. Come yeah, on. Because, you know, there's a lot of people that are hip hop loyalists and they probably might be like, Nah, we gotta give it to Manny just cause, but like, I mean, but that's not that's if, ha- not how they yeah, go. Not, nah, it's We're like, going record for record. Manny Fresh obviously is a musical talent. There's no denying that, and, and but he doesn't have the 100. Mm-hmm. percent But the range does not. It either yeah. doesn't exist or he doesn't showcase it. He doesn't. He don't give me versatility like Scott does. Anybody? Okay, Scott co-produced the root song with Erica Badu. He co-produced Crimea River. Versatility. And I could I could stop right there because hey, right. Point, say less. I don't say have less. to do any more. Man, Fresh like, can't do nothing with a Justin Timberlake track. Yeah, it's, it's like. And if he I, did, it's still gonna sound like it's from New Orleans. It's like I yeah that's that's it is that's, what it is. Say less. Exactly. Say less. Mm-hmm. This but one. I, but I respect Man Fresh though. A hundred percent. We all do. A hundred percent. This one had me sweating my eyebrows off. Because mm-hmm. I was dancing in my living room so hard. T Pain versus Little John. Oh, I, I knew Little John was going to win. Uh, I think he won that. Um, and yeah, he definitely won. He definitely won that. He, he won, won it, that. but Teddy showed out. He did. He did. Teddy he pinned did. their I, ass down. I, he did I would good. Say this. It was close. It was way closer than I thought it was going to be. It was close. It was Agreed. Close. He showed out for Florida. Respect. Respect mm-hmm. to him. He did a really good job. Mm-hmm. Um, who do we have next? Then we get to the big dogs. Teddy versus Babyface. Baby who face. won it for you? Babyface. Babyface won it. You know, far and away. When you think about it, like Teddy Riley, uh, he really had a movement. He did so many crazy records. That's he invented one of my New Jack favorite. 
Exactly. But when you think about Babyface, Babyface has Please. he's Please. still writing today. Um, records today. today. It's like Babyface is just too much of a legend to me. It's Andy. too much, too much and, of a monster to compete with. Yeah, and I'm I'm looking forward to any uh any uh, docu series that they do with Babyface. But anyway, um, I agree. Babyface and LA Reed, so yeah, for sure. Babyface got that easy breezy. Now, last question on that: Who mm-hmm. do you think the next versus battle should be if they could only do one more who should they do um i want to see missy do one but who would she go against who is her peer nobody she, she, she can, stands alone i agree uh, i would say it would be nice if she can go against a dude i'm trying to figure out who she can go up against hmm that's the issue like somebody had mentioned <laughs> usher but it's like, who would Usher go against? Usher doesn't have, in my mind, a contemporary to compete with. People might be mad at this, but Usher can go against Chris Brown. Usher would win. Bye. Good night. We're done here. I'm ending this. <laughs> Hi. You've been in LA too long. Chris Brown on his fucking best, on his best day. Okay. Now, now we got to remember, like, you know, if we just talking music, yeah. The only person that has been now, I gotta be honest, Chris Brown don't have as many classic albums as Usher does. Obviously. Yeah, obviously. Right. But I I mean, think about it. Who else could go against Usher? Like Nobody. Usher. His only contemporary, they would have to put Brandy and Monica together versus Usher. I'm thinking contemporary yeah. in your same timeline, your same genre, Ooh. in your same... Uh, Usher doesn't uh, have one. And yeah. I don't think Missy has one either. Uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, So you know what? Puff and Dre. Okay, now. Puff now we Dre. got... Now we Puff got... That could, that could work. Actually, you should just call Diddy. I know that's your boy. Y'all go to the same Whole Foods. Hit that man line and get he, him on. He, I mean, he he said that he he down to do it. Down but Dre to, said down. he doesn't want to do it. Yeah, Dre said he don't want to do it. So yeah, that I mean, but that's how you know you got too much money. You ain't even in the mood, niggas. Like I, I'm good. I'm just, I, I feel <laughs> him. I feel him. I totally feel him. But, but He's not gonna entertain us for free. I, I, I think Dre and Dre and Diddy would be would be an epic one be the epic one for sure i love it i love it this versus battle has made quarantine almost worth it what a fucking epic day that has been i'm happy that we've been able to like people have been able to kind of figure out ways to keep people keep people's attention you know what i'm saying doing this with people yeah Yeah, god bless twitter oh man it's i'm 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 super thankful i'm super (laughs) likewise it's crazy i feel like i've been slightly more busier now than I have before. I've been crazy productive too. It, it's been a blessing. Um, lastly, I want you to leave the people with a book, a recommendation, a book that's changed your life, something you think that they should read. They've got time. Literacy is the key to life. Like knowledge is power. Do you have a book that you love that you want to drop for the people? It could be about anything, about the music business. It could be a biography. I, yeah, okay, so yeah, I like whenever somebody asks me a book that they should read about the music business, it's a book called from D- Donald Passman. He does a new um, edition every time that there's new stuff to add. He's a lawyer. He's like one of the top lawyers. And he has a book called uh, Everything You Need to Know About the Music Business. And he has different... Oh, well, books. that's a perfect title. Yeah, so anybody that's interested in finding out more about the music business needs to uh check that book out the, again the editions always get the new edition it's how i start it's like i literally started from like reading that book and you know luckily i had a lawyer that kind of showed me how contracts work but you know anybody that doesn't have the opportunity to have that then they need to uh check that book out donald passman done uh, i will link that for you guys in the show notes so yeah. that you can check it out, too. I'll add it to my quarantine reading list. I got nothing but time, folks. <laughs> oh, I'm exhausted. Vince, I want to thank you for being on the Get Rich or Get Drunk Trying podcast. This Finally. has been, I mean, what a time to be alive. Thank it only you. took an epidemic for us to get it together, right? Right? Yeah, but but we've been trying to get it done for, for a while. Forever. But it's like but life I'm- gets in the way. But now that I've got time, you were at the top of my list. 
I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. It was a it was a blast being on it. And it we're great to talk to you again, of course, for sure. Absolutely. We might have to do episode two and get into some real deep, you know, racial disparities and money and I'm ready. <laughs> and and to be honest with you, I don't know if we could do a three way. I I have a guy that I've always are he's a good friend, but he's his name is Uncle Luke. He's always talk calling me a capitalist. I want to get him probably, maybe we might have to argue. He's a, he was a, yeah. So anyway, we might have to get him on a show to uh, Capitalism argue. Capitalism like is good, before. okay? Don't let anybody tell you otherwise, listeners. <laughs> Capitalism is the reason that we are in the best country on the planet. Don't let them lie to you. Right? Support that. Send me his contact info. I, I, will, I will definitely do that. Definitely. For sure, for sure. Again, I want to thank Vince Valhalla for joining us on today's episode, and I want to thank you guys for listening. As always, I appreciate you. Don't forget to subscribe to the show, and I'll see you next time. Be good.